I think just past history has got him in a spot, a dark spot, where it's tough to get out of, and I don't see him getting out of it. He's doing a good job at going slow to go fast. And I know what you're going to say. Ah, oh, that's what we used to tell you, or that's what they say. You got to go slower to go fast. That's not what I mean, people. That's not what I mean. Maybe the best thing is for him, just like his first name, he's better being the hunter, um, you know, instead of the hunted. And so we'll see. If he's going to have a title shot, it's going to be next weekend. He has to come back. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, James Stewart. And you know where we at. We had the Rewind, baby. Round six from Massachusetts Southwick. The sand track, the one and only sand track of the year. Probably one of the gnarliest races of the year also. So... We're going to get into it. We had another day of familiar results, you know, having, you know, somebody who's won before, somebody who just came back and won again and won a lot this year. But we're going to get into that at round six here at Southwick, Massachusetts, the sand track. Let's do it, baby. So coming off Red Butt and I guess the last two races, we had a little bit of break after Mount Morris. And like I said before, um, you know, it's always nice going into the break after a win. You know, you, I'm the best of the rest. And you know, whether that's um, going to last for the rest of the season, it's always good to have a week off and, and you just won. You're kind of living on that. Mo um, you're kind of living on that momentum. But I did say having a week off, even though it felt great, it didn't, you know, keep it didn't translate, you know, compared to like racing week to week. I feel like that confidence can continue um, going on that momentum. So um, having Eli have a good moto, second moto at high point, and then he came into Red Bud and dominated. Like I said before, it looked like he the best I've ever seen him. And it wasn't that dominating um, faction, even though he was dominant. It was the smooth, calculated, just real calm, like he was confident. And boy, we all knew Eli was good coming into Southwick. I mean, dude likes Ron Sand. I think his track in Colorado was a little sandy, you know, altitude. So he has to learn how to carry momentum. And I think that's more... Um, how Eli rides more than he's a good sand rider. I think Eli knows how to carry momentum and then, um, you know, keeping the bike from bogging down, choosing lines because of his track in Colorado and then being at altitude, the bike being slower. So nonetheless, we come in here, everybody kind of knew he was going to be pretty tough to beat. But boy, dude looked better this week than he did last week. And I'll explain that. But it was good to see. Um, it's always great to see, you know, excellent at his best. And there's different types. There's, um, you know, that speed, that raw speed where you're super impressed. And then there's also like what Eli's doing where it's like calculated and he's going slow, but he's overall going fast around the racetrack. And, um, you know, I know that's odd to hear, but Eli did a great job this weekend. And the first moto, you know, he got like an OK start, you know, top 10. And he was just kind of sitting back there and like a for a little bit. And then, boy, he just clicked it in the gear and just worked his way up through the pack. And then he did the same thing the second moto. Got a little bit better start, but you could just tell, like, there was no worries with him. And listening to him on the podium, I'm like, is the dude, like, lying on there? Like, is it really as hard as he's saying it is? Like, he's like, oh, man, like, you know, that was a tough race. This place is a lot of fun, but at the same time, it brings a lot of pain. I mean, the end of that moto, your legs are done. But then when I'm watching it, I'm like, ah, oh, boy, like, you just trying to be a little modest. But it didn't look that hard. It didn't look that hard. But we know Southwick's just a hard race in general. So um, Eli, was he looked good, man. Like, he, he looked good. And, and I think he's starting to, to feel it and, and sense how good his bike is, just like Supercross. Like, there was something about – something clicked in him in Supercross that just made him more confident. And it, was, it wasn't a confidence in speed. It was just confidence on how – fast he can go um you know doing it really relatively easy compared to everybody else and um you know so that's what i see right now and then he's won five motos in a row and each moto has got better and better and i think everybody else you can start hearing it in their interviews i'm looking forward to battle with eli he's been uh, on a roll lately which i gotta stop and when they start talking about eli and in uh oh, we didn't have anything for him like the first few races they were actually talking like, you know what, like, oh, I made the mistake, I could have won. Now they're talking like, 
Yeah, I mean, dude was on. They got the Ryan Hughes syndrome. Like, man, I ain't even worried about him right now. You heard Chase after the race. He was like, I already knew Eli was on another level coming into it. So technically, he kind of beat himself before he was going into it. But in reality, it was he was just telling the truth, people. He was just telling the truth. And, um, you know, the truth is that number three fast right now, boy. That number three fast. So last weekend was a struggle for my boy, Mr. Coffee. It was a big struggle. I mean, it was a struggle for all the guys on KTM, but, you know, we're talking about Mr. RD5 gone long years coffee. And as I've been saying the last few weeks, even though the results haven't been that good, I felt like he was riding better than his results say. And a lot of people say that, you know, like there are a lot of people say that. But physically, like looking and visually looking at Ryan, I'm like, man, he, he's riding good. So. He is gaining, even though the results are saying he's actually ascending or whatever, like whatever you want to say. He's he's going backwards a little bit, the results wise. So this weekend, he was a little spunky. He was a little spunky. I don't know if it's close to Minnetonka or whatnot. So he went in a little extra shower and bathed up, but you could tell the way Ryan looked was the same way he looked when he was jumping LaRocco's leap. Like, forget it. Lindsay, take the baby. We got a babysitter. Daddy's getting it done today. And you could tell he was riding with purpose. But man, like it it was, I would say Ryan was probably riding the same as he has been, maybe even a little bit better than he did at Red Butt in the weekends before. But I would say the difference was, was the track. The track allowed the the way his bike, the struggles and the, the issues that he've had, you know, with, with the KTM and his bike on the last few races, this track actually kind of, you know, dumbed that down a little bit. Like he was... um. The slower rebound wasn't that bad here. There was only a few sections around the track, and, and we'll talk about that, but the, there was only a few sections around the track where, like, having his issues on his motorcycle would really hurt him. And then I think you saw that as the race went on. Like, the, as the day went on, the end of the motos, and then uh, especially the second moto, it took a toll. And, um, you know, but going in the, the fast section, because Southwick's a lot about momentum, so if you didn't have that stop and go, and rely on you know having acceleration bumps you can actually if you know how to ride sin and carry momentum which ryan does um you can actually get away with it so what you saw was on three quarters of the track ryan was able to get away with it because it wasn't coming out and accelerating um a, a lot of the track where red butt was all about coming out of the corner and keeping momentum this track was about keeping that momentum up around the whole racetrack so in that fact like having a slow rebound was okay because you were more up to speed and then just getting a bike to just settle down and going into corners instead of having it to rely, you know, coming out and having a, the bike work for you. So Ryan was able to do that pretty well. So if you looked at around the whole racetrack, he was really good in the high speed sections, like really good. Um, and that's why when you look at lap times, he was actually pretty close in the second moto. I mean, he was only like, you know, half second to second off Eli. I think he was like the fourth, fourth to fifth uh, fastest guy on the track. He was even faster than Chase. Um, and only like like I said, half second off Eli, but he finished a minute back. And I don't think he fell to second moto, but I think what ended up happening was it, it took a toll on him because on the other quarter part of the track, the acceleration and um, you know, Ryan's biggest issue was when he came out the corner. If he made a mistake, just like those sand roll rollers at uh Red Bud, it was a lot of effort. And what you saw when Ryan was battling with those guys, it was like if he had a clear track and was able to just carry momentum, he was okay. But when those guys started battling and he had to start taking inside lines, being protective or trying to pass, it got a little rough for Mr. Coffee. He could not he could not keep up with those guys for the life of him. Like he he had no options to be able to pass those guys like he he had to hopefully they made a mistake or he didn't make a mistake. And when they did, it was like they just blew past them and the bike looking super slow and, and um, super dead was on a full effect when Ryan got around guys uh, this weekend. That's why he was fast, but he couldn't he couldn't really go nowhere once he caught anybody. And um, so I think in practice, he looked pretty good. And, you know, he was fast. The track was smoother. Um, but ultimately for him, he was just in a position where like he couldn't he couldn't take different lines to pass. And, um, you know, trying to pass those guys, he would make a mistake and they would end up, he would end up losing a lot of time. And it was a lot of energy. 
So Aaron Plessinger, just like Ryan, um, they both have been struggling on the bike. And I think Aaron said it somewhere um, on one of his interviews and stuff, but they talked about the difference with him, the first moto and the second moto. I know my boy Jay Dungey is a great friend of mine, a great mechanic, and I'm sure he gave him a little talking to. I kind of gave him a little tune in that last moto because I, I believe in the kid. I think he can do it. Um, but I think that and then the circumstances Aaron was uh, put into by getting a lot better start, just like Mr. Coffee back in um, High Point, dictated where Aaron was going to finish because I believe um, – if Aaron was in the, the situation and got a uh, bad start like he did the first moto, he probably would have rode better and maybe he would have got around, you know, top five or whatnot. But I don't think it would have been where he was, a podium. Um, that was dictated off the start because it didn't look like the bike was any better. In fact, it just looked like um, Aaron was able to take his own lines, kind of like a, a qualifying lap if, you, if nobody's in your way. You know, where Ryan, where going back to Ryan, when Ryan was by himself, taking his own lines and not trying to pass or, or block people, he was okay. But when he had to like try to block uh, people or try to make passes, that's when the bike came in effect because he was trying to take different lines and make things happen. And that's what I saw with Aaron. Aaron was dictating the race because he was up front. And so he was taking his own lines, which was able to him to just, he was going to do what he thought was the easiest and try to keep the momentum up and, and all that stuff. And so to me, the difference was a start with Plessinger and being able to run his own lines more than there was something else that clicked in. And granted, he rode better. His mindset was probably better. Jay got an that ass in between motor. That all helped. But it also helped that he got a start and he was up front and running his own lines. Because when Chase caught him and, um, you know, Eli got around him, it, it was – Kind of like what happened in the first moto. He caught, he was fast in the first moto. He just caught those guys. And just like what happened to Dungey, he couldn't go around them. Like he couldn't make any passes. He was making mistakes. And um, that was, you know, that was just kind of on the situation. So nonetheless, he rode good and he was able to get a podium, his first podium um, this year. And I think it's the first podium for KTM um, as a team, um, overall at least, um, this year too. So to me, the KTM boys, same struggle. Um, they're riding a lot better than the results look. And, um, you know, thinking about it now, I think they, they, it, what comes down to them is starts and then being able to run their own lines and not really get into battles. Cause if you think about all year, when they get in battles with people, that's where they really struggle. So I think the track lended to, it was an easier and better setup, um, to get away with things on this track. And then, um, but it took a toll on Mr. Coffee at the end of the race because he was still working hard so uh, but they rode good they rode really good so we'll see so this weekend being halfway point it's round six and just like my shirt says back nines matter because they matter we're in the halfway point we we in the back stretch right now all the racing really kicks in effect now you know we got to the first few races and clearly it's separated there's two guys up there there's two guys and it's chase sexton which still holding the red plate. It was looking a little suspect for a while because, you know, he did a great job on keeping that thing. And then you got Eli. Obviously, the momentum's are climbing. But then when you look at him in a hole, they're, they're almost, the way Eli's been riding and Chase has been, I wouldn't say struggling because he's been getting second, but it, it hasn't been like the beginning part of the year where he was just, just fast and everybody, you know, he looked like he was the fastest person. Um, that looks like Eli, the most consistent, but nonetheless, if the championship ended, Mr. Sexton, Sexton would be the red play in the championship holder. But um, it, to me, what's going on is that now I wouldn't even say the red plate is holding Chase down like he's riding different. What I would say is that like now you kind of getting in the meat part of the season. And the tracks are different, you know, and I think it is just only continue getting that way hotter and then, um, you know, relying on bike setup. And Eli really likes the next, would even set him podium, he likes the next few tracks coming up. Um, and besides the first motor at Paula, you know, Eli's been riding pretty well and he's been, you know, just as consistent as Chase. But the difference now is Chase is going to have to start beating him. Chase is going to have to start beating him. And when I'm listening to Chase and I'm watching him ride, it's just looking, uh, it's his attitude, the way he's racing is a little different than it was when in the first, I would say, three races. First three races, he was super fast and, you know, he should have won. I mean, uh, 
two, three of them. Even at uh, Hangtown, he was right there. Um, both motos, he could easily won those. This last few weekends, it's almost like he's he's like, okay, like Eli's on a roll. I don't know if I can beat him, but I'm just gonna be consistent. And so when I'm watching him ride, it's almost like he's doing the opposite of what he did in the beginning part of the year. Like the beginning part of the year, he thought he was the fastest person. You know, he his bike was the best. He felt like he looked the best. And he he wrote with a confidence that like when he caught people or the speed wise, he was just he felt like he was better than everybody else. Now it's like he feels like he's almost protecting something, almost like he's a little bit of I'm the best because my red plate says I'm the best um, and I'm going to be the consistent. I'm not going to throw this thing away, but I don't think he looks like and he's racing like I'm faster and I'm better than everybody else. The difference that's the difference i see and you can tell that by the way he begins his motos you know the last couple of weeks they've been talking about intensity with him and intensity comes from like you know believing really i mean a lot of guys that believe like ken believes like when he gets a start he's fast enough he can pull away you know the belief where it stops with him is like the latter part the latter parts of the half of the race you know the second parts of the motos you know but we'll get in that in a minute and so when I'm watching Chase, I'm watching a guy that's almost in protective mode, like he's waiting for Eli to, to make a mistake. And I think that ends here. I think Chase is going to have to start beating him. You know, and he said that on the podium, like I'm going to have to start beating him. The Honda, large from the team manager, says so he's going to have to start beating him. He's going to have to start riding more aggressive. So for him, um, the difference of where he's at now compared to where he was in the beginning, the same. He still has red plate, and that's good. But I'm looking at a different rider, and it's going to be interesting to see going into Millville um, how that takes effect because I think he's got to start taking the Eli. Otherwise, you know, Eli's just going to keep winning these races, and I don't even know if Chase tries to take it to him. Can he beat Eli? But he ain't going to be able to do it this way. He ain't really doing anything different than he did the first one. Like, I was stoked to see him fight at the um, at Thunder Valley because, like they say, every point matters, and you just fight. You never know. Right. You, you just never know. He fought. He threw chocolate on Eli's brakes and it melted. And he was able to and his teammate fell over like a wet noodle. And he gets the overall. Right. He gets an overall. So it, it just needed to start somewhere. And I just thought, like, again, going back to the Instagram post, like, if you're going to do all that, then that means you're going to come out and fight. And so when he rolled over at um, Hangtown, it, it was just upsetting because I was so excited to see the, the Mr. Instagram Ken. But in, in reality, people, I even said it at Thunder Valley. Even though he was fighting, and then he was fighting his teammate, and, and, and he fought a couple other races, it didn't look like a guy that believed that, like, it, he didn't believe, it wasn't a, a belief in that fight. You know, like, I don't know, like, it was like, almost like a guy that's throwing haymakers, and like, just going, ha, da, 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 but waiting for somebody to grab him in, in the fight because he knows if the fight keeps going on, he's going to get knocked out. Like, he don't want to be in that fight. So going back to this, that's what I saw. So when we're looking at the results now, and when I say, like, I don't, he's been doing the same thing as he has all year. That's kind of what I see. But now it's like everybody's kind of caught on that. And I think what, what happened, and we talked about it earlier, Ken's biggest thing was not the beginning part of the year. It was going to be, if, the, if he made a change, it's like the mental side of things, whether he felt like there was going to be a difference between years past. Because in years past, unfortunately, this is what we see. Now, I think it's taking a different level now. And I think it's not, you know, it's not like the kid ain't trying or the kid ain't good. I mean, he's trying. He still is trying on there. So don't, don't think I'm saying that. But the mind's a powerful thing. I said, like, what you say, what you believe, and what you let happens end up coming to fruition. Like, that's what ultimately happens. And so just like what happened with him when Chase rode around the outside of him and kind of rolled on, that's what you're seeing. That's kind of what you're seeing. And other riders are seeing that, too. That's why when Chase gets around him, he gets pissed. You could tell Chase gets pissed when he's behind Ken because Ken races him differently than he does everybody else. It's just natural. You always want to beat your teammate. There's just something. You get a little extra fire. It's like your family member. You just want to knock brother out. You don't want to get beat by your brother, but it happens. It happened in 250 class. 
But we still stuck about German chocolate and sexy section. So Chase gets pissed when he catches Ken because Ken be roosting him, throwing all this chocolate, and making him pull the tear off, run on tear offs. The reason I say Ken's trying because, I mean, there's only two minutes left in the second moto at the gnarliest track of the year. And he's roosting Chase. He's roosting him. And like he was in, he was in top three, right? He was in top three. But as soon as Chase passed him, like he, he was like, all right, I'm, I'm done. And I don't even know what he finished the second moto, but it could have been worse than what he finished. I don't know. I don't know. He got four, fifth, sixth, whatever. But it, you could just tell Chase was getting pissed on there because he was like, dude, I just ran you down. You can tell when another guy's laboring on there. And I said it at Red Butt. Um, Ken was just going fast enough in certain parts of the section, the track, in those those tighter sections. He was just going fast enough to get you, like beat you right there. That's why I chased Blue by his ass going down to um, start straight away. Because Ken Cole hold him off. It was all about like physical, like trying. And when Chase passed him, he was gone. But Ken's, it's a mental battle with him because it's it's all the things that happened in the past is leading back up to him and reminding him that nothing's changed. And when you believe nothing's changed, and oh man, you start getting this. And so Ken's going to have to definitely snap out of it. Like, I think it's going to have to be a big change on there. Like, it's going to be a big change. There, It's not the bike. You know, it's not like he's not in shape. It's right up here. And, you know, it's, it's hard to jump on the guy when there's something going on upstairs. Not like he's slow or whatnot. Or like, you know, he can't count, you know, 2 plus 2 equal 18. You know, it's not that. It's just... You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that's where we're at. You know, like everybody's trying to help. We're all trying to help. But ultimately, it's up to him. And I think just past history has got him in a spot, a dark spot, where it's tough to get out of. And I don't see him getting out of it. It takes a while to knock out a negative, right? You hear all the people like, oh, man, you're great. You're great. But somebody say you're bad. Like, that's the one you remember. So same thing in, in racing. Like, you have a bad race, so you get knocked out here or there. You, you never really forget that. So, you know, Ken's in a tough position, but I believe in him. And I believe if he wants to, like he he puts in the work and he has the people around him, possibly, you know. Um, I know the team is willing to do everything to, to get him out of it, but it's really going to be up to him because a lap ago he was right on chase. Now he's like 20 seconds back or whatever, over-exaggerating, but he's far back in one lap. Uh, but it's going to be a big change for him, and he's going to have to make it. I just don't see it happening this year. And luckily for us, we still get to see him out here. He still pulls whole shots. He's still fast. He's still in the German chocolate, people. I still enjoy watching him. But when we're watching, Eli knows, Chase knows, Plessinger knows, Dungy knows. You know, hell, the alien that's just flying across the UFO knows. Just give it time. And, you know, it's history would say he's going to struggle. But it's the German chocolate. He got a pretty chin, too, just like Ryan. But we're going back to um, now his teammate, Mr. Sexton. As I said before, with him, you know, he looks like he's riding differently. And it's funny to watch. When you watch Chase in certain parts of the track, like, he made some great passes around right before the finish line area. Like, he was just going around the outside of Cats. And when you watch him, like, you're like, okay, like, if he was going that much faster, because he looked faster than everybody through that section. But he wasn't. Like, he was fast in that section, but overall, he, he was, I think he was like, he was slower than Dungey on there. And Dungey finished a minute behind him. So add that up. Aaron Plessinger was the fastest guy of that moto. So when you start looking at things, and when I say it, Chase is riding differently in, in, almost in protective mode it's like at the end of the races he's kind of waiting for those guys to to wear down like it's like he he believes that he's better than everybody else and then so when he decides to go fast he just goes around the outside of those guys because he had a great line and that's where he's really good at standing up you know keeping momentum up in that area um just like the past where i said he's really good in the open parts of the track where in the tighter stuff maybe not so well not as as good as he is there um, so he just easily went around those guys and then he would just try to look like he could just carry momentum and just catch up to Eli. But the difference was to me was like he was just once he caught him, he would make that pass to keep the red play like he was protecting his points lead in a sense, not really racing to win, racing to to really get second. He was he was trying to win to get second. If that's the way it looks like. And um, 
you know, but he did a great job. And I think the years past, at least like he, a man has to know what he's going after. And maybe that's not the right way to go about it. You know, being this early in the way I believe to be the guy, like he's going to have to change that a little bit. Uh, but at least he has a direction of what he's trying to accomplish. You know, like if Eli throws it away, if he has an ET moment, then, you know, he's going to be right there in, there in effect. But I think Chase is going to have to change and go back to the way he was before and start believing with those sunglasses on and sexy, sexy, getting that ass. But maybe he wasn't lying to us when you said, this is the last time I'll make that mistake, how you fell over like a wet noodle in Colorado. Well, this is the way... You know, maybe he's trying to eliminate. Well, he won't make that mistake if you keep running like this because Eli's going to be out, gone anyway. Um, but nonetheless, he's still got second, and he still has the red plate, so we can't say too much about him because he is winning, and if it ended today, he would be the champion. Enough said. There it is. But Eli Tomac, and we're not going to the suntan yet. We're going to get on that motorcycle. We got to get on that motorcycle. Like I said last weekend, I, I was the calm voice. Just chill. Colorado just chilling now we're going to calmly get into the way his bike is working and the way Eli's working with his bike that's working which makes everything work and it's working to dominating factions and not working to like big big 30 40 seconds JS7 gaps Ricky Carmichael laughing the whole goddamn field we all stuck on the side of the hill Millville 2006 but whatever we can talk about we had Southwick but Eli, like it's, he looks good. Best I ever seen him. But I think he's having more fun than he ever has. And he has that same look as the Supercross. That look as daddy not just has diapers. He owns the diaper factory. He just owns it. He is covered. He is. He is, right? So he just, he's doing a good job at going slow to go fast. And I know what you're going to say. Ah, oh, that's what we used to tell you. Or that's what they say. You got to go slower to go fast. That's not what I mean, people. That's not what I mean. So if you take a section around the track, let's just say the start straight. Like he's passing mechanics here. Comes out in that corner. Mechanics right here. All the way up until those two single jumps right before the, uh, the little drop off, right? So that's, that's a pretty big section. Where Eli was doing, which is a guy who knows how to race. They all know how to race, but a guy that knows his bike well and knows where his strong suits are at, and he's taking advantage of that, and where he's not, and the back might not be as well, is good. He's taking, he's eliminating, he's doing the dungeon. The reason I said I, I, I like the dungeon for the title is because he was eliminating things that might happen, eliminating mistakes, and Eli has figured that out. And last weekend, I talked about how when you watch him ride around the track, the places that maybe was sketchy, he didn't feel that good, he was just chilling. Colorado. Just chilling, head bobbing, feet on the pegs. Miss Daisy like, you know? But he was going faster. And he was going faster than everybody else. So this weekend in the mechanics area, um, that whole straightaway, Eli was going really fast uphill. Every place around the track that he was going uphill, he was fast. Anywhere where he can keep the gas on, keep that rear end down, and keep the bike, you know, somewhat stable from what he can do to it, he was fast. Going down the hills, like, so you come out mechanics there, you come out, mechanics on the right, and going down, leading into that, like, it's a super fast, high-speed section, and then you start going back up. Eli would pin it out of that corner, and then not saying he was going slow, but he wasn't the fastest there, going down, leading up into that, you know, that little tabletop. And so you go up up the tabletop, and you drop down again, and then you go up another single. So what Eli was doing was, Super fast in the mechanics area corner, going down the straightaway. And once it started going downhill and he started leaning that bike over right before it starts going back up, he would back off the gas and he would take his time through that split part of the section. Once he got through that little chicane corner or whatever you want to call it, a little, you know, crooked cat, whatever, and started going back up, he was fast going up that tabletop. Once he got over that tabletop, going back downhill, leading up into that single, he was backing it down again. And then the next part, he would hit that single, and the next part was going up the hill. So he was taking the section and eliminating any opportunity to lose the front end, any opportunity to have like what happened in Atlanta where the bike can have a gnarly swap. He was taking all that out, and he did that around the whole racetrack. If you look at him entering the corners, 
Eli was super calm, super calm. Where Chase passed everybody at, Eli was calm through there. Like he would jump in, in the first mode, he actually had a good rhythm. He would jump in there and he was actually using those breaking bumps um, to jump around the racetrack. So what he was doing was taking a, eliminate all the mistakes and using anywhere where he was off the gas lean or the bike might be, be as good. He was just taking all that out and it was brilliant to watch him. And I, what I also notice he's doing, he's keeping his bike straight up and down more, you know, entering the corners. Like he only leans when he has a bank to lean off of. And this is not saying he's, he's doing that because all oh, his bike doesn't work well or whatnot. So maybe he is doing it, but what he's doing is fast and he's able to do it. You know, let me back up a little bit. Riding a sand track, it's not about like just bulldozing. Like when you think about sand, you think about, okay, you got to keep momentum up, which means you got to turn, you got to keep the gas up, right? In Southwick, even though it's a sand track, it's actually really slippery, like really slippery. That It's got a hard base to it. And to be able to ride this track well, you got to do two things. You got to know how to ride sand, and that's not one of them. So I guess you got to do three things. You got to be able to ride sand first, guys. But you also got to be able to like, learn how to read the track. And when I say by reading a track, it's not about like getting up into like the fluffy stuff and the berms. Actually, where you want to try to get is in the bottom of the berms. And Eli was doing that better than everybody else. If you notice, he was a little bit lower than everybody else. That does two things. It, it keeps the option of like a berm blowing away because it is sand and you got 40 other guys or 39 guys coming in there after you usually. Um, a chance of the, the top of the berm blowing out. And you saw guys crash um, doing a race like that. So it eliminates that. Um, but what it also does, it keeps you in like the hardest part of the, like the, the most compact part of the track, which makes the tires not spin as much, eliminates you being able to flying over the berm. And it also keeps your bike, you know, somewhat sucked down. And so what Eli was doing was riding low into the corners and it was almost like he was taking that sand and making it not as sandy in there by doing that. And he was on the, the bottom part, which is close to that hard base. So he was he was had more traction than everybody else. But to be able to do that, you got to know how to rot, like read the sand because you don't want to be half the corners. You don't want to be that that far down because sand also you have stuff, you know, the berm falling back over there. You get that loose stuff. And sometimes that, that deep part of the track is super deep on there it's it's like it it sucks you in like quicksand so you got to be able to read the certain parts of the track where that's at and eli did that really well he did it better than everybody else therefore like what he was doing was you know going keeping his bike straight up and down in the corners and taking his time in like leading into the corners to find those sections to make sure he didn't blow the corners out and as i was going back to the part where i was saying you got to go slower. Um, he was going slower to end up going faster. It was like he was going slower to have a faster speed throughout the whole section of the track. And so by doing that was how he was able to read the track, stay his line selections. And uh, the second part of this thing was how I was saying to be good at sand. You got to be able to use this track because this track is rough. And any good sand rider, what you see those guys doing is like jumping around the racetrack, jumping. You know, people think of sand, they think of like full on bulldogging, like da, 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 you know, beating in that. No, I mean, you can go, you can look like you're going fast, but what Eli and the good sand riders, Jeffrey Herlins, Tony Caroli, uh, Stefan Everts, uh, Mark DeRuver, Ricky Carmichael, uh, Ricky was different, that dude was an animal. He, he was flying feet, flying off and all that. We just went at it. Um, but the real good sand riders, they, they start picking their way around the racetrack and they start, they find a rhythm on there. And that makes the track a lot easier. It makes it where, you know, you're saving a lot of energy and it takes a lot of, um, you know, like effort and possibilities of crashing out of things. And, you know, it's just like you hop around, almost just jumping. And you saw Eli, you know, where Chase was going around the outside. If you look at him, the first motor, where Chase passed Plessinger and a couple guys on the outside right before the, the finish line. If you watch the first motor, look what Eli was doing. He was jumping that like single and then like landing the break about jumping again. And then he was jumping into the corners. A lot of those like little geos, he was jumping into the corner, into that deep part of the, the, the sand where I was in that harder, 
that lower base and almost slingshotting himself out of that. You know, those rollers, um, there was in the middle part of the track, there were some rollers in there. Eli was jumping his way through there. And maybe sometimes he wasn't actually like, like double doubling. It was more like he was bunny hopping like through there. And he was keeping his bike light, which kept the bike from, you know, bogging down. And he was doing a great job. So was Jet Lawrence. The reason Jet Lawrence was better than everybody else is not because he was actually wide open. It's because when you watch him, he looked like he, Eli did. He jumped around the racetrack. He had a rhythm. And having a rhythm around this type of track allows you to just be like real, like methodical, save a lot of energy. And not to jump on the 250 subject, but we'll get into that in a minute. That's why when you saw Jet, it was like those guys were like, catch him. And it looked like he was like laboring. And then next thing you know, you look up, he was four seconds in front of him. Rhythm, rhythm around the racetrack. He wasn't going faster. He just had a better rhythm. And Eli did. So I think for him, um, you know, again, back to his, the way he practices, you know, being at altitude, everything leads up to for him to be a good sand rider and for him to be, um, you know, really good in this type of tracks. Eli's really good in, in tracks that are super rough, those gnarly rutted tracks where he stands up, keeps the feet on. He's really good. So he practices at altitude, which makes him in shape. What it also does is makes a person ride with momentum. You got to keep speed up. So when a guy does that for his whole life, that's how he practices. It's kind of like how I, how I used to practice when I was younger without a clutch. You know, how you ride without a clutch, you got to shift. Well, how you can shift throughout that without a clutch, you got to keep momentum up. You got to learn how to like carry your speed to shift, and that's what he does. And so Eli and Jet, they both look the same to me. They look like they wasn't the fastest person. They look like they were actually just cruising, but they were faster and everybody was suffering Aaron Plessinger, they looked like they were doing it the easiest, and it looked like those are the only two guys that actually could just pick up the pace whenever they felt like it, and it wasn't a struggle. So Eli did that really well, and that's why I was saying like he was able to he, – he slowed down to have more speed, right? He wasn't going slower to go faster, even though that's somewhat what I'm saying, but that's not what I'm saying. He did it in a way that was just – methodically he would slow down here so overall he would be faster throughout the rest of the section and he was trying to do that not by he wasn't trying to go slower to go faster he was trying to be smart so he knew like by doing this allowed him to go faster in there so he was ultimately trying to go fast and he did it in a way that looked like he slowed down to go fast but you know what i mean and eli did it the best and when he does stuff the best he looks like he did this weekend people when he looks like he did this weekend those boys in trouble you hear them they talk different they talk about eli every comment of everybody else had his name in it is three words eli chase said it aaron said it Damn, I said it, the world said it, and we're going to say it here at Bubba's World, and you know why we're going to say it? Because there's two weekends in a row that he's going to get it, and you know what he's about to get. Hit it with it, Cole. Suntan, neck's on fire. Neck was on fire. He's, on, he's hot, people. He has that, like, blue fire, that hot fire, not just, like, a red or the yellow fire, coloring crayons, like, oh, the fire's red. Nah, this stuff is like that blue steaming fire, just like a hot new bro, pro circuit pipe, just hot. Look blue, and that's what he had, and damn, he looked good doing it, the Colorado boy, and boo, y'all better stop this train, y'all better stop this fool, I'm telling you right now, Eli, I had to wear this t-shirt, because back nines do matter, but I don't have enough blue shirts to come up here and rock, and I can't be wearing the same shirts, you know what I mean? you can't be wearing it, and he's winning so much, so today, when I get home, I'm gonna buy some more blue shirts, because I got a feeling, I got a feeling, that tonight's gonna be, it's gonna be raining blue. But you never know. That's why we only halfway through it. But today, you the man. Eli Tomax. Sexy. Sexy. Awkward. Awkward. He's actually not even getting awkward. He's getting smooth. He's getting smooth because he's like, I'm on TV a lot. You just see him. I said it a long time ago. I think it was India. Look, look at that face. Look at the face. No, uh uh. Look at the people around him. Look at their face. They look like we know it. We know it, all them fist pumps. And they probably fist is like messed up. They hitting it. Dude's confidence, team confidence, all of them confidence. Except for everybody else that's not on blue, they ain't confidence. He is. Damn, that boy look good. So the 250F class. Last weekend, we had not your average Joe Shimoda. Far East Coast. Get it done. One of the best rides 
of the year for sure, but in a long time. Long time, the way he wrote that second motto, like I said, Shimoda, Shimoda, not your average Joe. And then so it was cool to watch him, like even he, I thought he rode pretty well this weekend. He just had, he ran into Mr. Donut, Mr. Lawrence, and just like Eli with Jet, jumping around the racetrack, Jet was doing it better than, you know, anybody else around the racetrack in the 250 class for sure. And I, the reason I say that is because if you watch him, especially the first moto, you know, he, he got the whole shot. He pulled out to a pretty good lead, you know, five, six seconds. And then, um, you know, he fell and then all those guys were there. You know, he was maybe a couple seconds behind Cooper, but he caught him instantly, instantly. And so you thought once he passed him, he would just yards like pull again because he just had four or five seconds in a lap or two um, that he would do it again. And so the bike wasn't bent up or anything like that. But he didn't like the race was actually a lot closer than I actually thought it was uh, when you're looking at the speed separation and there was a speed separation and in, in faster lap time. It was clearly over a second, maybe even more uh, where Jet was faster than those guys. But just like Eli, if you catch him in a certain parts of the track, it almost looks like the guys like laboring or playing around with him. But what Jet was doing was hopping around, hopping around the racetrack and keeping you know, doing certain things to actually end up going faster, going slower to go faster. Just like what I said with Eli, Jet was doing that, but it made it look like he was going slow. And so when those guys caught him in that that part, he was doing it, they almost ran in the back of him. Like it looked like Jet was playing with Cooper um, for the rest of the race. But what he was doing, again, he was hopping around and you would just see Jet, like those guys would be battling, they'd be like right on him. Look like they're about to pass him. Two corners, Jet be gone like gone and it was all about like for him he wasn't rushing any part of the track no matter who was around him in the second moto with um you know kitchen no matter who was around him he wasn't letting them dictate the way he was going to attack the racetrack because he knew if he did that he was faster and it was a way where he was conserving energy and he would just pull away from those guys quickly and when you watch the second moto with those two guys levi was actually faster lap time than jet he was actually the fastest not by much by the 10th but he was the fastest but when you watch him you're watching two different riding styles and two different ways to attack south weight and ultimately when you look at jet's way it looked like he was standing up you know like he can do this for three years he's doing this until next year south weight he's doing this until he's on 450s the way he was riding and levi was about to run in the back of him like he was like damn dude this dude's jet lawrence he ain't jet now like, he looked like you can pass him, and Jet was just blah, blah, blah. And then the turn later, he'd be gone. I called the way Levi was riding the Jeremy Martin. One, like, he was just attacking everything. Let like, dude's fast guy in the world. Fast guy in the world. And then Jet was, you know, doing his thing. And Levi was faster overall, like, you know, one lap. But Jet was doing it easy, and that's why you saw these big gaps. Levi looked like he's run up on him, running the back of him. And then Jet would just hop around. And uh, doing it. And there was two different ways to attack the track. And Eli, um, Levi was just bulldogging that thing, you know, just going fast, power driving through it. And Jet was taking his time and doing his, his uh, you know, what Eli was doing. So it was cool to see that. And then the second moto, just pay attention to that, people. Like, it give it's a perfect insight of what I'm saying. Just watch the first few laps, the first 10 minutes with those two guys. And it'll really show you exactly what I'm talking about, how they picked, you know, Jet and uh, Eli picked their way around the racetrack. And by doing that, even though other guys might have been faster, you know, in one lap, they were faster. And when they made the when they made time, they made heaps of time gaps and it looked like they were just cruising. And so Jet did really well. Now, the other brother, Lawrence Hunter. I said last weekend I was a little concerned. I was a little concerned. I was like, man, like, that's just weird. Like there was a ticking noise. Ticking means bomb, right? Somebody had the fuse is saying, you know, he had die hard. Bomb about to blow up. So we give him a pass. Second moto, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was still ticking. Jet just dominated him. But I was like, man, he did look different. Like he looked different. And I was like, all right, we'll just see. Maybe, you know, maybe that was just last weekend. Maybe he was just struggling. He did say he struggled. Well, you gotta believe, like, in the back of his mind, like he knew what was going on. And I know he got into it with Styles Robinson. And what I said between the difference between the Lawrence Fours, like who was going to lead the points and what, how it would be in the truck, was one guy 
you know, it was like you, you couldn't ask for a better person. Happy for you, and that was Jet. But I said Hunter had a little, little heat to him. You know what I mean? Like he was like a little killer to him. When you saw what he did to Mr. Robson, I thought, man, he was throwing Vegemites down under. He almost kangarooed him. Like he was hot, pissed. You know when people get so mad? Like he probably even like, yeah, you know what? Like maybe he did run out of tear offs, whatnot. But he didn't care. Like you get so mad that you just just like the fight you just got to get knocked out right and he wasn't caring what anybody said like you you're almost pumping yourself up right like you're trying to the race sucked so you, you're going into this and he was hot i thought they were going to fight and so that attitude of like hunter being pissed like that jet beat him he was gonna punch him in the face that's what i was talking about it's the first time i ever seen him like that but i just knew he had that in him well anyways um he struggled and i said like well maybe it was just like maybe that points gap because when Jet went out and he realized he had the points lead, there something changed with him. Well, this weekend you got to believe coming into it, like he still felt like, you know, until you go through it, you still believe like, oh, I got the points lead. I've been fast. I could have won a couple of these races. You know, my brother got me last weekend, but I let him win. I got the red plate, and I just went one one last year here. I'm good saying Ryder that he was feeling pretty confident going in, and boy did he wake up call. And it's the same thing I said with Chase in the, the 250 class, like uh, the 450 class is like when you start riding differently because of your circumstance, it changes everything. And I, with Hunter, he went from a guy that can win to, like I said, a guy that was battling in fifth place. He was even farther back than that this weekend. And it was all a mindset because the bike was the same. I mean, his brother looked just like he did all year long. And you would think after the first moto, after the Styles Robinson thing, he would flip the switch and come back. Maybe he rode worse the second moto. I don't know. But, like, he's got a good dude around him. And I know Johnny O is going to let him have it. Johnny O knows. That's a no-no. Johnny O knows that's a no-no. Hey, that rhymes. You can't win like that. And I was like, hey, if you ride like that, you can go from first to fifth. And Jet's going to blow past your ass anyway. You're going to be down in the points lead. And that's what happened in one race. So, Maybe the best things for him, just like his first name, he's better being the hunter, um, you know, instead of the hunted. And so we'll see if he's going to have a title shot. It's going to be next weekend. He has to come back just for his psyche. Not saying that he couldn't like win the title. Jet has a, you know, Jet's young. So, you know, bike could blow up. You know, he could crash whatnot. I don't see it, but maybe it will. Um, he could win that way. But if he's going to believe he's going to beat Jet straight up, he's got to come out and beat Brother's ass next week. That is, that is what it is. Because Brother done put it to him last couple weekends, and he feels like he inherited the points lead. Brother blew his doors off last second moto. Brother blew his doors off along with other people this weekend because he wasn't riding the way he should be riding. So he's got to get it back, and he don't have the points lead. It's going to go from 10 points to 13, whatever, to 25 if he rides like this next week, probably even more. So you're going to go from up to a race down quickly. So we'll see. But Mr. Kangaroo, Mr. Lawrence, Mr. From Down Under, Jet Lawrence, smooth. He was smooth this weekend. No worries. Got him a Vegemite sandwich and a donut. Hit it for him, Cole. Suntan. Neck's on fire. Neck was on fire. And I know he was hot. His brother was even hot. Her Hunter was Hunter was hot. He wasn't punching brother in the face. He was punching everybody in the face. Styles Robinson. Cool first name anyway. Style. Boy, sometimes you just got to let people just do what they're going to do. You're going to go over there and try like, man, I was out of tear off. That's what almost happened. That's what almost happened. Styles knew. He was like, I ain't going in. He walked all the way up to that fence. And he saw the way, you know, Hunter was like, a little crazy. He was like, ah, I'm going to just stay right here back behind this banner. Because he come out, I'm not in this property, so he can't shoot me. No trespassing. So he stayed on the outside. And then, you know, Hunter was doing his stuff. And he's like, all right, whatever, man. I was out of terror. My bad, my bad, my bad. I go home. And that's what happened. Some people, you look at him, you're like, eh, no. You want some of this too, old man, like Debo said on Friday? You want some of this too? No. Boy, get your ass out of here. Mess around with these boys. That's what happened. That's what Styles' daddy was telling him. Oh, I hear messing with this dude. He's like, no, 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 no. Live to fight next weekend. And next weekend is Millville. So we're going to get to quick commercial break. And then stew and stew. We'll be right back, people. All 
All right, people, you know what time it is. My favorite time, your favorite time. Hell, it was all of us' favorite time. A lot of guys' favorite time when they end up on one side of this list, and sometimes maybe not the other side, but you know where we're going. Stews and stew. Let's get into this. All right, the first one. We're going to go easy. Let's just be happy. Let's just keep it. Let's keep happy. Stew. Awesome. Amazing. Stumendous. People who do great stuff, you know, like just stew. That guy's a stew. That guy's a stud. You know how to, if you win the race, you're a default. Default. And I'm not even going to call this guy a default because we have those. You, get, you just win the race, you just get a stew just because you did it. But Eli, it's, it's above. Like he's like not like your average Joe. He's above average in the way he's doing it. Although maybe, you know, you look at it, it's a little boring. You know, it's not like beast mode. Even though he was going maybe a tad little faster this weekend, even though he wasn't the fastest. AP number seven, number seven, still kicking it in there. He wasn't fast, but he did it in a way that just was so stupendous, beautiful. Eli Tomac, you a stew. It's, I, I can't even really say much about it. Like, it was like you're riding. Yeah, you came up through the back of the back. Yeah, you just went fast. Went everywhere, like, yeah, I'm happy. And he sits there. Stop lying on the podium. Stop lying. Don't tell these people that it was so hard. You know it ain't. You know it ain't. Okay, I get it. To win any kind of 450 national is hard. It's hard. To win anything is hard. You know, when I race this dude down the hallway because I don't want to lose, it's hard. You know, it takes effort. So, yeah, you know what? It is hard doing the thing, but you know. You be lying. You be lying. I see JS see through it. We all here at Bubs World see through it. You just saying that just to keep it authentic and just make it like a serious. That's cool. But Eli Tomac, you a stew. And then, of course, Jet Lawrence. You're kind of in the same boat as Eli was. Default now. Because you looked a little better than default. You looked better than your average. So you did it better than everybody else. And you know you're going to get it because, hell, you get a stew when you win. That is point blank. And some other guys get stews when they get like fifth. RD got one because he was basing Lake Minnetonka, dancing with Prince. But we ain't that. Your default, you're a stew because you're better than everybody else. And you look good doing it. Just chill. Look like your boy Eli eating them donuts down under. Flaminda. What? What is it? Veggie Mike? I don't know. You need to give your brother one. I don't know. We might have talked about him. So you a stew jet. And you just came back in here. You like my bike was smoking last weekend. And I just smoked y'all this weekend. And I'm jetting back to what I was. I got the jet fire pack. I'm back. So Jet Lawrence, you a stew. And I don't know who else. So we're going to have to get into the next list, people. Stewed. Pissed off. Pissed off because hell, you just pissed off. Pissed off because you're on this list. Pissed off because you got cross jump. Pissed off because you're talking about something that happened back in Supercross that pissed you off today when the guy cross jumped you and he's got a cooler first name. I don't know, yo, your first name is pretty good with Hunter. Styles is cool. I brought that Styles, but you know, nonetheless, you're beating him in the points and you had the red plate. You just pissed off because you're battling him back in eighth place when you were just winning. Stude. So let's get into that. All right. Now, I think. I think a lot of people were stew this weekend. Not, not like stew, like meh, you know what I mean? Suffering. I and mean, then we have to come up with a list for that. But they were stew because I know that second moto and some of them for the first moto, they were like, man, my legs are on fire. Eli said his legs was fire. I think he might've been lying, but you know what? We'll keep it. Like he just tell the truth, but it was hot. It was hot. That track was rough. These people up here, why you got to keep going up north? Why we got to keep going up to the sand track, right? Some of these guys, they were stupid that he had to show up and ride this tough track. I mean, I was, it didn't look that hard to me, you know, but I'm on the couch eating potatoes. So, you know, me and Potato Bag, man, I think Cooper's out there racing some old boy Chad Reed. But nonetheless, we ain't up there. We here. So the, the riders were stupid. So I'm going to have to say the 450, 250 class and all the guys that didn't make it. And maybe even fans because it was hot out there with no T-shirts on there. Y'all might have been a little stupid because of the weather and the way the track was. So y'all on this list. But let's get into the real list. Stu, Mr. Hunter Lawrence. That boy was hot, people. And when, like, if I could come up with something as quick off the top of my head, the level he was, he was past Stu. He, he it wasn't Stu Mendes. It was like, I don't even, third degree. He was, the boy was hot. I, he was pissed. Dude, first off, he got pissed because he was in the back of the pack, right? The first couple laps, I was like, oh, okay, all right, maybe he's coming back. And then it was like, whoa, what? He's still there. Wait, he's still there? He's still there. So you know he was boiling because he was still there. He was still in the same place. Then he come up on Styles. Styles didn't have no tear off. Styles was a stupid because he was pulling on tear off. He didn't have none. He was like, 
And then he, he cross jumped him, not on purpose. And then boy, Hunter went down and then he almost got hit. Not once, not twice, but almost three times. He was like the matrix. He was ducking people and had no visor on. That should be a stew for his visor always falling off too. And boy, after the race, usually, you know, you got to be really mad after finishing the moto and you're hot. You know, you just lost the points that you're still worried about this dude on there. You know, all the things that happened during the moto that you're still worried. You, you remember what happened and when it happened. And we're not even just talking about this race. You heard him. He said in Supercross, that boy was Stu. He might have been the hottest Stu of the year. Boy was Stu. And his brother was eating donuts like, hey, hey, what happened, dude? Like, what happened to you? Styles, what? Styles cut you off. Papa said Styles cut you off. Man, forget that, man. Let's go out there and kick butt. Hunter was like, ah! I told you, people. I told you. I said, man, he was different. He had the little fire to him. He loves his brother. He loves. I mean, he's happy. He likes competition. Boy, that boy, don't, don't let them veggie mice forgive you. Don't let that, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That dude's a killer. And so he had a rough day and he was stewed. And you'll see it. Cole play in the video for him. Show him how stewed he was. So, of course, he was stewed. And then the second moto, he go out and do the same thing. And Johnny Yo is going to let him have it. And his, bro his brother looked good. We already filled that in. So he's stewed. So let's see how he reacts next weekend. And then the other one, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm stewed, but I'm not. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. <gasps> yeah, that's what happens. I'm pissed because earlier people, you remember, I was in the zone. I was in the zone. I forgot who I was talking about it. I was like Joe Schmoder out there. I don't even know who I was talking about, but I was talking about him. And I was talking about him good. And then Cole's phone rang. But that's after I showed up here. And he got like, Jane, you turned your phone on me. Let me hear that on there. And doo 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 with that sorry behind ringtone. That's just natural. Oh. That was natural too. Oh, wow. That, that was my bad. So bad. So bad. Did you turn off your phone, James? Did you turn off your phone? Whoops. Whoops. I was in the zone, people. Yeah, I'll, I'll accept that one. I was in the zone. Right. Let's see if I can back it back in. Chase uh, rocks and races. Chase. See, you can't even get it now. Yeah. <laughs> so we here at Bubba's World, the recap, we are stew. Why? Because we was witnessing greatness. I was in that zone, people. You know, sometimes when I get in that zone, I talk too much. But that was a good talk too much. And then he ruined it. So he gets no neck burn today. And he gets on this list, too. So all the people at Southwick, all the riders, it was hot. Fans, it was hot. Track was tough. Hunter, you're still smoking. You're still smoking. You better calm down. Maybe you don't want to throw any jet fuel on that. That boy going to blow up. He's still right there, 13 points back, 10 points down, brother eating donuts still. And then me, I'm Stu, because this dude right here, cell phone. So, all right, people, that's your list. You got both Lawrence boards, one Stu, one Stu, Mr. Eli Tomac. Let's hit him with it, Cole. Suntan, neck's on fire. Neck was on fire. Let's hit him with another one, Mr. Jet. Suntan, neck's on fire. And let's hit him with, no, you don't get one. Because you can't get a neck burn because you stoop. So don't hit it. All right, people, that's your list. And that was from round six, where now we're on the back sides, where back nines matter. Where you had Eli Tomac just dominant, chilling, Colorado ish, doing his thing, looking good and ever. Mr. Lawrence, after smoking last weekend and then just decided to smoke all you fools this weekend, Jet back on where he belongs, another Lawrence. And then his brother, we'll see how Mr. Red Plate comes back with no red plate and see what he does and tries to take the red plate back from the other Lawrence. But, well, you know, we'll see what happens. He's got to worry about Styles. Styles might be styling that ass next weekend. You know, no tear off. We'll get you some extra tear off. So that was round six from Southwick, Massachusetts, where you had, again, Eli Tomac, Mr. Jet Lawrence, dominating these others, and then everybody else hoping, wishing that next week at Millville that it won't be raining blue and red. But hope don't float.
Poop in one hand, wish another one, see which one fills up quick. And we'll find out at round seven from Millville. Until then, I'll see you guys next week at Tuesday, where we always hear on the recap show. All right, people. Bye.